In today's Yoga with Melissa, I am going to share with you my process of modifying a yoga pr practice when you have a shoulder injury. Hi, I'm Melissa from Yoga with Melissa, and today I'm going to take you into my process of practicing yoga with a shoulder injury. In all the 11 years that I've taught on YouTube, I've never taught a class in this way. Um, normally, I have a plan and a script. <laughs> I'm so nervous today. I'm to completely freaking out. Uh, today, I have no script, no plan, because um, I actually had a couple of scripts that I was going to come out with, but I realized that the way that I do this is without a script and a plan. So let me explain. When I, I'm going to share with you my intimate practice of yoga today, of what I do when I come to the mat. So that I recognize this is not going to be for everybody. If you're looking for a polished practice that you can follow, there are 540 something other videos that you might want to go check out. If you're looking for a practice without a lot of talking, this is also not going to be a practice for you because I'm going to be dialoguing and sharing my experience with you as I go along all the way through. So um, when I practice, um, I'm always tuning in and seeing what I need next. So I actually never know what's going to come next. And so I'm going to take you through that process today. If you have a shoulder injury, this is going to be a very good practice for you today. But even if you don't, I'm going to take you through the process that I go through when I come to my mat of how I practice. So shall we just do it? <laughs> Okay, so the first modification for me right now is uh, one that actually breaks my heart a lot is I've had to give up my most favorite pose, which is Shavasana, because it just hurts me too much to lie down on my front, on my back, on my side, whatever. So um, you may rest back if you like to start, but I am going to start seated because it's more comfortable for me. It's less painful for me. Also, we're filming in a park where there's a lot of construction around, so there may be, you may hear some construction noises. So find a position for you that you can center and tune inwards, and that's what I'm going to be doing to begin. I'm going to be aligning my spine so that I come to the center of my body, bringing my ears over my shoulders, lengthening up through my spine, but also really connecting to the earth and uh, allowing my breath to drop into my belly, letting there be space between my teeth. And I'm just gonna be quiet for a few moments while I tune in and notice what I find. And I encourage you to do the same in your own body. So to begin, I'm lengthening my exhalation, allowing the exhalation to be longer. And a way that works for me with this is something that one of my students has recently taught me in our membership community, is to think about it coming up the inside of my lungs like a, an umbrella closing. And for me, it's always been difficult to lengthen my exhalation, but that visualization really allows me to lengthen my exhalation. On my exhalation, I'm letting go of the nervousness I'm feeling right now, and also the grief that I'm feeling right now of letting go of old ways of being that have served me for a long time. So I'm letting my rib cage soften. I'm letting 
so I'm feeling this is like a kind of armoring that's happening around here, around my rib cage, in my upper back, that wants to protect me from being vulnerable right now. And it feels most helpful to do this with my breath. And I'm just noticing how close to the surface my emotions are right now as well. So I'm feeling a lot of tension as I tune in right along my spine. So if you're not already in a seated position, I would invite you to join me in a seated position. I'm gonna twist from uh, my spine Focusing mostly on the space uh, in my thoracic spine around my rib cage. And just uh, turning my head a little bit to encourage some movement of f f what feels like stuckness right in between my shoulder blades, from my neck down to between my shoulder blades. And I'm breathing as I move this area. And then I'm going to come back to the center and pause and just notice how that feels. And I'm going to rotate and turn to the other side. And rotating my head as well. So this practice is not going to be about rehabilitating your shoulder. It's more about modifying practice when you're in injury. What I've noticed is that I don't really think many teachers show the messy middle. Um, I know, at least in my training, I was told not to show the messy middle. I was told to only um, show things after you've been through them. And I think we do get to share how much we've been, how much we choose, how much we want to share. Um, but I also think that this sets something up where um, teachers always, you know, or where classes and yoga classes always get presented as or our yoga practice gets presented as always being the same and we don't ever get to see that there are seasons to our practice, that our practice changes depending on the season of our life, depending on the actual seasons. And this is really important to see and I think also very important for teachers to model. Okay, come back to the center. And I'm gonna just take a breath and see how this, this place that's feeling really stuck right here uh, between my collarbones, between my shoulder blades is feeling. So it's starting to loosen up, but I want to uh, get it moving even more. So I'm gonna do some cat pose from seated. And if it's bothering you to do it seated cross-legged, you could also do it kneeling if that's gonna work better for you on all fours. So I'm gonna exhale round here and then inhale and move forward from not quite my heart center, but it feels a little bit higher to be honest with you. So exhaling round 
in inhaling and arching. So as much as um, I've played this role as teacher over the last 11 years, I'm also a student of yoga. And I really think that the role between teacher and student and is is breaking down and just as with many systems in our culture there's there's a breakdown happening right now and so part of showing you this is wanting to honor that breakdown and show that um show the other side show the student side Okay, and I'm also going to side bend here just a bit because um, side bending is, is irritating the, the shoulder for me. And to the other side. And back to the twisting. And then I'm going to come back to the center and pause and be still again and see what wants to come next. I, I can feel my mind telling me what I want to do next, but I want to really tune in and see what my body wants next. So right now I'm feeling really disconnected from my feet and the earth. So I wanna stand up and really connect to my feet and the earth. So I'm gonna do that next, but I'm also feeling cranky in my neck and shoulders and disconnected from my core. So I'll start to address all of that when I come to standing. So what I wanna really feel is strong and stable and connected in my legs right now. So I'm going to do a Qigong exercise that I really liked that helps me to get into my legs. And you inhale and you bend and you exhale and you flick your leg. So we'll inhale, bend, exhale. And it's also a breath exercise. So to stand on both feet and feel the difference between both legs so this leg that I've just done this with feels really strong and connected more tree like and I can feel the whole bottom of my foot now so that feels really pleasing to me <laughs> I like that it makes me happy one thing I've really noticed is how much I rely on my yoga practice for contentment and how much I've had to change the ways I find contentment in my yoga practice with this um, injury. So let's do that. I'm going to do that on the other side. Join me. <laughs>
Okay, and then I'm gonna pause and just feel. Yeah, so I can really feel my legs underneath me and the full connection with the earth underneath me right now. And like I say, this is really pleasing me. I can feel the energy flowing through my whole body now and that place too where it felt stuck before is feeling less stuck now. So yeah, one of the reasons why I really like Qigong practices because they really get the energy flowing quite nicely. So that that really pleased me. <laughs> I like that. So I do a lot of checking in when I practice. So that was that was really good. A lot of times I think when we do a video, it can be quite, you know, there's a plan and we go through it. And um, I like yin because we do the check-ins, but uh, it's nice to have these, this kind of like, let's go and see what happens. Okay, um, so the next thing that I was feeling disconnected from, and it, it's still true, uh, this core, and so I think the way I'm going to connect with my core is kind of a warrior three variation uh, because my arms can't go overhead right now. I'm going to do it with the, I think just by my side because even the prayer position is not feeling great right now. Okay, so let's make a little room for this. Okay, so... One thing I've noticed with this shoulder is that if I tense up too much, it, create, it creates a lot of pain for it. So I'm going to be conscious not to do that, to stay soft through my limbs as much as possible. Uh, but I do want to feel that connection with my core. So I'm softening through my, I'm going to use my left leg as my supporting leg right now. I'm staying soft through my limbs and I'm coming forward. So I don't want this to be like overly, um, you know, straight, straight lines. It's not what I'm looking for, but I am going to stay in it and breathe a little bit to try and connect with my core. So I'm going to breathe into my side ribs and my back. And I'm going to exhale and draw my navel back to my spine. Kind of do a little bit of corset breathing, so to speak. coming back up. I'm just pausing to see how that feels. And I'm feeling a little bit of tension in my neck down through my shoulders. So I'm just going to take care of that here. I mentioned that before I came up too. So I'm going to take my feet a little bit wider hip width. And I'm just going to do some neck circles, which hopefully my mic doesn't rub. And then staying over on that right side, ear to shoulder, and rotating up and down. Tailbone drops, so my low back is long. And around to the other side, left ear to left shoulder, and rotating chin to sky. And back up. Okay. 
that didn't work as well as I'd hoped. So, so you win some, you lose some, right? Um, there's, there's tension definitely creeping in here down through my shoulder. So I'll do the other side just to even it out. But the, the lesson in that is that this warrior three isn't working for me really very well right now. So if I was, this is the difference between doing this on my own and doing it for you. If I was doing it on my own, I would just drop the other side. So let's do the other side. Breathing into your side ribs and your back. And exhaling. And coming back up. Okay, so I'm going to take some more time here to just tune in and see what would be good here. And automatically, I'm getting like that intuitive response that some goddess victory squats would be good. So I'm wanting to get back into my legs because that was feeling good. So I'm going to step out, turn my toes out, inhale here. And exhale, come into that squat and come into my legs. And I'm just going to do a little bit of down and up here. And you can use your arms if you want, if that works for you. I'm going to stay connected to my belly here. I'm just staying down, feeling the openness of my hips, the length of my spine and breathing. And then coming back up. And I'm going to just release that out and uh, pause here again. Okay, um, I have been finding a lot of um, pleasure in working with my feet. So I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, circling on the ball of my foot. And right up on the toes and we'll do that on the other foot too. And circle the other way. And then we'll come on to the roof of the foot. So you're opening up the uh, front of the ankle as well. And the front of the other ankle. And then let's sit down and actually uh, open up the feet a little bit more and then we'll do a little forward fold. Okay, let's sit down with your legs out in front of you. Take your left leg and draw it in and we'll take our fingers and place them between our toes. 
And you can bend your toes forward and back. And then your whole foot. And then your whole foot, the other, uh, circle your whole foot the other way. And then just give your foot a massage down the toes, down the backs of the feet. And place it out and feel the difference between your two feet. And then we'll do the other foot. So you'll place your fingers between your toes. And bend your toes forward and back. And circle your feet. Circle the other way. And then massage down each foot. And then place your foot out and feel the difference. And then you can bend your, <laughs> bend your left leg in. We're gonna twist again. Sit up nice and tall and fold forward over your straight leg. And then come up and we're going to switch sides. So we'll twist. And come center, fold forward over your straight leg. And then we're going to come back up to seated and just check in again from the beginning. Notice your connection with the earth, the energy flow in your body, your spine, your breathing. Notice what's changed since the beginning of the class. And if you'd like to take your final resting position lying down in Shavasana, I would recommend you go ahead and lie back now. If you'd like to finish seated with me, you can do that. One of the things that has always been a real comfort for me is poetry. And it's been even more so <laughs> recently um, I'm finding real comfort in it and this poem I chose for you guys today and for myself is a poem on autumn so I'm finding myself and we're literally in autumn season right now here in the northern hemisphere and I'm finding myself in an autumn season in my own life where I'm letting go of old ways of being an old self 
And in the autumn season, it's you're, you're in the season of letting go. And what comes next is not a season of rebirth, but a season of the of winter, of the fallow fields of of death. It's the death season of going inward for inner listening, for quietness, for stillness, for tuning into the wisdom. But you don't come out renewed first. You have to go in and receive the energy of um, conserving energy first. So. First the letting go, then the conservation. So there's a lot that happens before the rebirth. And so uh, this season of autumn has been very uh, intriguing to me this time around. This poem is by Jan Zwicky. It's called Purcell, Fantasia for Five Violas Upon One Note. As in autumn, the great flame descends stepping down into the world, the slow flame stepping down. Great shells of light laid out along the rock and ripeness in the green heat of the forest, in the gold heat of the fields. The flame steps down, the story once again unfolds. The burning that is never done is consummation the taking whole of joy, the willing immolation of the green breath on the altar of the blue transparent air. And with each step from the beginning, something climbing, steady, calm, like hope, but deeper, made earth, fidelity, which lifts unfolding, emptied in the rain of light, the stepping down around it of its dissolution, beauty more than any of us can bear, which is gratitude for brokenness, its arms raised to the emerald scattering of leaves. Oh, let there be fleet clouds, the clatter of doves like bright seed laughter. Let there be grief, green as dew wet moss at dawn. The world steps on its way, the earth under its light, all praise, all sorrow ripening. It is, it knows, it carries you. So gradually allow your breath to deepen. You can wiggle and stretch out. If you're lying down, you can bend your knees and roll to your side. Slowly make your way up to seated. Gather the fruits of our practice first into ourselves and then offer them out into the world. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu Loka samasta suki no bhavantu Loka samasta suki no bhavantu May all beings be happy and free and may the thoughts, words and actions of my own life contribute to the happiness and freedom for all. So give yourself a thumbs up for honoring the seasons of your practice in your life. And put, I am listening to my body in the comments. And thank you for subscribing and for sharing this video with anybody who has a shoulder injury. Um, Not for rehab, but because they might need a video that they can do with a shoulder injury. Um, Or anybody who needs to hear about, you know, your practice doesn't always need to look a certain way. That it can be highly modified and there are seasons to your practice. Um, Yeah, I think that's everything. I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our ocean. May you be strong as the mountains and may you be as rooted as the old growth trees in our forest. Om Shanti, Namaste.